I would like to thank the producers of NCIS Hawaii for canceling the show. I know people were upset by it because they love the show, they love the characters. And I, even I was shocked about, about that because NCIS is still on. Los Angeles was on forever. And you would think that Hawaii would, would at least be on for five years. Like, like usually CBS keeps a show in Hawaii, Magnum P.I., Y50, Hawaii 50 Part 2. <laughs> They've always had a show in Hawaii, but not this time. So it's kind of shocking that they, they, they did that. So I feel bad for the fans. But from a hip-hop standpoint, I'm ecstatic because that freed up LL Cool J because LL Cool J joined the cast in the second season. And like they said, he be performing the day show today. And he hasn't been there in 20 years performing because he's always been, he's been filming NCIS. So it's fantastic for the fans because he got to finish up this album, The Force, produced by Q-Tip from a tribe called Quest. I love Q-Tip. Q-Tip, one of my favorite rappers, but also one of the best, most underrated hip hop producers out there. Man, if you look at Tribe and you just, you look at people's think of travels and Low End Theory and Midnight Marauders, man, it's like, this guy's so good. But I think the problem with q was he was a perfectionist. So even when we get to something like Vibe Thing, like that just came out of nowhere. You didn't think like, oh, he produced this. <laughs> this guy is so good. But he's a perfectionist. And as the years went along, it was, you know, it's almost like he just wanted something, everything to be perfect. And it kind of delayed him producing things but this album that he produced for ll is really good now is it one of ll's best albums of all time i was like i have to listen to it again like for me that's still like bigger endeavor and mama said knock you out and mr smith um radio the first album which is people never talk about but that first album was great um and even the lackluster albums like uh 14 shots to the dome and uh walking with a panther um they had some good tracks on there. The 10 album where the Neptunes produced some tracks like Love You Better. That was a good album. Um, I think the album featured Paradise with A. Marie. So no, like I feel like he's had better hip hop albums. Um, but for 2024, with the dearth of great lyricism, of the dearth of great wordplay, of the dearth of just great hip hop period, it's probably one of the best hip hop albums this year. Like Kendrick Lamar is probably the best the song of the year hip hop wise it's not like us so it's Kendrick Lamar I don't see anything else beating that out but as far as album it's probably one of the better albums this year and I would like to ask these hip hop and R&B stations it's okay if you play Murdergram duh featuring Eminem it's okay to play it's okay to play an LL Cool J song it's okay to just drop an LL Cool J song after Make the Stallion and in between that and Lotto it's okay because I it's and the problem is today is that a lot of these DJs and a lot of these programmers don't know music. Not, they, they don't go that far back. They just say like, eh, eh, that's old. It's like, no, that's what it used to be. Like, I I was not born when Motown was happening. Like, like when Smokey Robinson and the Miracles and the Temptations with David uh, uh, David Ruffin and Andy Kendrick was hot. I wasn't born then. But, I, but it didn't stop me from hearing that song down, down the line. <laughs> I still heard that song. Like, why can't, why can't I, you know, Miles Davis, you know, before Bitches Brew, you know, during the, during the cool era, I wasn't born during that time, but I heard that stuff. There's nothing wrong playing older tracks or, or new tracks by older artists. And let me go back to Murder Graham. So Murder Graham, duh, is probably one of the best hip hop songs this year. The wordplay, the word flow by Eminem and LL is just ridiculous. Like, Eminem wouldn't be Eminem without LL Cool J. I'm, I'm sure if they ask LL who is his influences or who do he think is one of the best rappers ever, I'm sure LL Cool J's name comes up a lot. Marshall Mathers re- respect the, respects the craft and respects his elders and he respects the people who came before them. That doesn't happen a lot these days. There's, there's a lack of appreciation of people who came before us from the younger generation. But that's just societal. Societal has a way, America has this way of just downplaying elders. They have a way of downplaying influencers, older influencers. When they say influencers today, it's weird how they change influencers. Your influencers used to be someone that's older than you. They used to be people that you're influenced by a certain artist. You're influenced by a certain uh, marketer or business or something like that because they did it and they were successful at it. Influence today is basically someone that's around the same age, a little bit older, and they're posting stuff on social media. Or they're talking about something on YouTube. That's it. That's an influencer today. They really hijacked that name. Where before, 
an influencer was an LL Cool J to an Eminem. That was an influencer. Eminem was influenced by LL's wordplay. He was influenced by LL's stardom. He was influenced by the way he carried himself on stage. That's crazy. But Murdergram, it reminds me of like when LL would pop up on 4321, which was on his album, but he's he's on a track with DMX. Like, so, whoa. <laughs> and he ha- he was hanging with X. Same same thing with uh, Flavor and Year. You, you see Biggie, you know, don't be mad, UPS is hiring. And in the middle of that video, you get LL saying he, she, which means a lot <laughs> as the years go along. Because back then when he said that, I said, what did he mean by that? What do you mean by he, she? And now uh, if you do your research, even though he says it's not what you think it is, I think it is what you think it is. <laughs> As you do research about that about, about that era and certain models who are in that video. But I digress. But yeah, uh, Murdergram is great. I, I love Murdergram. He has a track with Nas. He has a track with um, Snoop Dogg. And LL also has a song called The Vow. He features young artists, but newer, young, undiscovered artists. And LF says he's made a vow that everything that he, every album he's going to feature some new artists on his album, which is great because I think there's, I think, I think there's some really good rappers out there that we don't know um, that doesn't get a lot of shine. And uh, I'm glad for LL to uh, feature these feature, whomever male, female. I think we need a lot of new blood in hip hop because hip hop is tired and it's boring once upon a time, you kind of liked the twerking, and now it's kind of like, uh, <laughs> oh man, sad. But yeah, so go check out LL's Cool J's album, The Force, The Force, um, produced by Q-Tip. Um, tell me what you think. I still, have to, I'll give it a listen to this weekend. But this is just like an early review um, because I heard Murder Graham. I said, man, this is like the best song I've heard in a long time. This is like one of the best flows I've heard in a long time because he just. It's rare that you hear flow today that you're just really impressed by. Like I wasn't a big fan of the Migos, but but at least they had a different style. And I think that's all I'm asking for hip hop. I'm asking for two things from hip hop: give me something new that feeds the soul of hip hop, that 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 because to push hip hop forward. Because I think hip hop's in a rut. And also, if an older artist produce an album, listen to the album. If you hear a track, okay, maybe you don't like the lead single, but there's got to be a song on here that you like play it and don't do it like hit or miss or smash it or is this a hit or not no because you can't trust <laughs> you can't trust hip-hop fans today a lot of them kind of don't know so just play it put it into the playlist and see what people if people like it or not if they if there's if they don't like it then fine but at least you give it a shot because i think i think older hip-hop artists older classic rock artists are always going to have classic rock stations to be played like nirvana and fruit fighters are classic rock now which is crazy but there's always going to be, a, they're always going to have a place to be played on. Radiohead is always going to be played on some station. Like, look at Oasis. Oasis is on tour now. The Oasis peak was like over, like, what, 25 years ago? But Wonderwall is still being played somewhere. You know, Champagne Supernova is still playing played someplace 25 years later. Why can't we do the same for hip hop artists? You tell me. <laughs> 